Michael's out cutting hay today, or he's cutting his own hay today. I'm looking at my reclaimed coal mine ground and it looks very, very good. I figured it's definitely, all the crops are due for a drink and I figured it was gonna look rough out here, but actually looks really good. You can see it coming up through that cover crop wheat. And I even ran a vertical tillage tool over this, but I didn't run it very aggressive at all. I was running it shallow and I was running it without the blades being angled. So it looks really good, but if you look over here, it's getting pretty weedy. And that's because the sprayer's sitting there and it's been sitting there for over a week now, waiting on uh, a dealership to try and figure out what's wrong with it. The uh, left side boom just folds itself straight in as soon as you start it, so that's, that's neat. But uh, all in all, the corn looks pretty good out here um, for being really, really, it's not great farm ground. Um, it's, it's pretty poor dirt. Um, there's definitely some inconsistencies out there, but overall, it, it looks a lot better than I expected it ever to, so I'm not complaining about it, but we definitely need a rain or it's going to get looking rough in a hurry. And we definitely need to get the sprayer fixed because it's starting to look rough over here in a hurry. Uh, over here, it's clean as can be. We got that sprayed, or Michael did, before the sprayer started giving them fits. And... Uh, over here this little triangle got sprayed but you get back in there where it's not sprayed the water hemp and grass and shit like that's really it's trying to make it come back so we need to get it sprayed as soon as possible if we have to hire it done we will but i really really don't want to do that because that means i've got a return chemical that i bought to spray myself and that's just i don't want to mess with all that i don't know that uh, knock on wood, but that Case Patriot has given us like five to ten percent of the issues that uh, the Haggy did last year. And I didn't get into that on YouTube a lot because I was so irate and seeing red about that Haggy. But uh, yeah, that Haggy was a it was a turd. And the thing about that is, the Haggy was a 2018. This Patriot is a 2006. And it's got three times the hours on it. It's been a way more reliable machine. All this is is a bad wire or a bad control box somewhere. But it's electrical. And trying to troubleshoot electrical stuff is difficult. The dealership I have working on it isn't super experienced with sprayers. They're They've got some guys getting trained on them, so they're kind of working with me, and I'm kind of being a guinea pig a little bit. But the good news is it's not like we've got three weeks of rain in the forecast, and it's going to get muddy, and we're not sure if we can get it or if we can't, so it'll all work out. Michael's out here on some reclaimed ground of his, well, it's his new hay ground, I guess. He's got quite a bit of it, and he's cutting away at it today, so... Say so we'll be rolling this up maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. We'll see. Okay, enough lollygalgin and supervising. I got hay to rake. Because Michael's cutting it faster than I can get it raked and bailed right now. So let's get with it. Hey, but it'll do. Cows don't eat snowballs, so it's better than nothing, I guess. A little bit thicker over here. Well, hay's raked. At least everything I cut yesterday is, so on to the next great thing. Run the baler, I guess. Not a, uh, not the slightest chance of rain today, so that's nice. And they took all of it out, which... I, I don't mean that as a bad thing because we have hay down. I would much rather have wet hay and corn that has moisture than I would dry hay. But, you know, silver linings. I guess it works out one way or another. And then it kind of doesn't work the other way. But 
Let's get with it. I'm a big fan of this baler. It makes some phenomenal looking bales and I'm running like seven, eight mile an hour and it, it would go faster if this field wasn't rough. I could definitely drive faster. It doesn't care at all. It just eats hay. Uh, it's pretty awesome, but it makes awesome looking bales. They're tight. You can't even get your hand in them. And uh, I'm a big fan of it. I just need thicker hay for it. Um, this hay is like, you could square bale this stuff with an old New Holland or John Deere baler and it would handle it. So it's not saying much that it's eating this, but even when you get into a big clump or something, it doesn't care at all. It just sucks it right up in there. So I like this thing. It's, it's pretty slick. I'm a big fan of this baler. It makes some phenomenal looking bales and I'm running like seven, eight mile an hour and it, it would go faster if this field wasn't rough. I could definitely drive faster. It doesn't care at all. It just eats hay. Uh, it's pretty awesome, but it makes awesome looking bales. They're tight. You can't even get your hand in them. And uh, I'm a big fan of it. I just need thicker hay for it. Um, this hay is like, you could square bale this stuff with an old New Holland or John Deere baler and it would handle it, so. It's not saying much that it's eating this, but even when you get into a big clump or something, it doesn't care at all. It just sucks it right up in there. So I like this thing. It's, it's pretty slick. I don't know if you guys can see the, uh, hay floating in the air on camera but uh got dust devils everywhere out here but uh traded michael spots i'm out here mowing some of my hay on reclaimed coal mine ground and this stuff's actually fairly thick um but i've got three bolts that had sheared off earlier this year in a gearbox and uh this time they just fell out so i'll have to get those three bolts and stick a linkage back in but that's all it is so that's not a big deal. Um, I'd much rather bolts rattle themselves loose and fall out than I would um, have them sheared off in a gearbox again. So I'm not complaining. Not complaining at all. But uh, got some clouds to the east of us and actually a wind out of the east and a bunch of pop-up showers to the east right now. So it'd be really cool if we got one of those because my corn over there and up on the hill over there could definitely use it this hay couldn't but i don't really care about the hay the hay's not what makes money around here well now the fun begins michael's raking and i'm gonna jump in the baler and we're gonna see how many bales we can make on this so we are absolutely getting with it out here michael's raking over there i'm bailing we're cranking them out I love this ground out here, the way it's rolling. It's an old reclaim coal mine strip pit is what it is. That's what that lake is, is an old strip pit. But uh, that's why it's hilly and it's all terraced the way it is. But uh, making some good looking bales. My air conditioner still doesn't work, but life's good nonetheless. It's not too bad in here. Well, so far we've got about 24, 25 bales, I think, off of this. And there's a little bit left to go. So, it ain't bad. It's it's thin like everything else has been this year. But we're just so damn dry that... I don't know, the grass is thick. It's just not tall. It got, it got dry and it just stopped growing. So, not much you can do about it. Other than cut it the first time, hope it rains, and hope you get to cut it again, I guess. But we're enjoying the hell out of life beautiful country out here the camera really doesn't do it justice as to how steep and rolling this is i always thought duels on a baler tractor was stupid but not gonna lie there's been a couple times out here i'm not real upset about having them so anyhow we're about done here michael's going to break the next little patch all right we got two more cut right now and the mower actually broke down again it's a minor breakdown but it's broke down nonetheless so we need to get that fixed and uh, so all it is is three bolts we got to go get and put back in it. So it's not a big deal, but 
Uh, got like maybe three acres left to cut at that place. We might go ahead and bale it today, what was already cut yesterday, just because it's hot and it's dry and the hay's drying in a day. So I don't know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we're loving life. Putting up nice, pretty bales. Change of plans. Had two windrows left and I just had a bearing go out. So it doesn't look like it's gonna be that hard to fix. Take off three sprockets and four bolts and slide a new one on, it looks like as long as the sprockets come off easy and they're not seized on there. But uh, we'll see. Got all but two windrows done. I wish we uh, would have at least got this done, but oh well. I'm sure that's a fairly common bearing, so we shouldn't have any issues getting it tomorrow. Well, the silver lining is the uh, baler broke down and five minutes later they called us and said the sprayer was fixed. So I'm not looking forward to getting the bill on this, but it's fixed. So just got it filled up. He's going back to get some more chemical because we forgot a little bit. And uh, we're going to try and get the corn sprayed tonight or finish it at least. If you look closely, you'll see something that doesn't belong there. And that would be my nozzle body. At least it's complete. Easy enough fix. Got plenty of them in the cab. And before some of you flip out, but I'm changing nozzle bodies, getting chemical on me without gloves on. Well, yes, you're right, but that's why we got rinse water for. Damn it. Get off my back. I'm fine. I know I'm playing stupid games, and I know I'll probably win stupid prizes, but I'm in a hurry, damn it. You know it's getting dry when there's no water standing where all the cattails normally grow. Like, you can see all my ruts here from when I planted this, and it was not wet when I planted it. This just always lays wet, and there's always water standing up here on top of a hill because it's reclaimed, and I know that's ass backwards, but it's just... It's how reclaim is. It's it's this ground is shit. But anyhow, um, it's dry. It is very very dry, and the corn's not showing it that bad yet. Like it's not. It's starting to, but there's very little moisture. You got to dig down about five inches to find it. The ground's starting to crack and whatnot. But we've got two weeks of no rain and. It's gonna be in the upper 80s and into the mid 90s. So it's gonna dry up really quick. Um, honestly, I kind of regret side dressing some of this corn already, especially this, because this only has potential to be um, about 180 bushel corn. Like 200 is kind of wishful thinking on this type of ground. Um, I've got ground that I'll push for 300 on, but this ain't it. Um, that said, we put a lot of nitrogen on this already, and I think a lot of the yield potential is gone, and I think some of that might have been uh, wasteful. Um, it's got about 170 units of nitrogen on it now, which for our yield goal out here is, is fine, but uh, kind of wishing we had more like 140, 150 at this point. Um, just as dry as it is, but oh well, you know, it is what it is. At least fertilizers come down some. Still don't love paying for it, but it's cheaper than it was. So we're spraying away out here, getting her whipped. Auto booms doing auto boom stuff, and I'm recording shit, steering with one hand, and spraying end rows. So what could go wrong? We're just rowing corn. Now, this is service pull up and get yourself filled. I probably wouldn't even have to get out. I know I've said it over and over again, but uh, the corn looks really, really good this year um, so far. Um, we're kind of in a bad little corner here, but you look out in there, it is very good looking corn. That spot there where nothing grew, where the glare's at right there, 
that's where we had about 2,000 ton of turkey litter piled up but uh, everything looks really really good the next week or so is just going to determine a lot because we're we're dry we're not showing it that bad yet we are in, in the heat of the day and I think in these next three four days we're really gonna start showing it but uh, I don't know it's uh, it's looking like we're not gonna get any rain for a few weeks so Got to start a job. New job. Back. State. Corn. Post. Next. Yes. Whoops. Next. Next. Yes. 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 Boom. Now. Come on. Going through the monitor here. My, uh, I had to close out my other job because we were too far away. But uh, the corn's looking really good. I am just hoping that... Um, okay, we're good to go now. I'm just hoping that uh, we get a rain. I We're going to have to get some rain. Uh, they're talking about a tropical storm down south. Normally, if those are strong enough and they make it, we get some rain out of it. So we'll see but they've normally got to be pretty strong to make it over the mountains to hit us and us get any rain out of it. So I'm in southwest Indiana, for those that don't know to put it into perspective, but this corn just looks amazing this year. Um, we just got to get some rain on it. We've done everything right so far. This is kind of the last pass until fungicide. So from this point out, it's kind of out of my hands and it is what it is. So part of it part of farming and uh you know i knew that when i started doing it so just kind of gotta have faith that everything will work out and go from there and it helps to have crop insurance too but everybody thinks well you got crop insurance you'll be fine and for the most part yeah you will but that's why you pay your premiums every year too but the thing with that is is I would much rather have a good corn crop than I would a crop insurance claim. Definitely make a lot more money when I've got a good crop. So, uh, never really want to have an insurance claim, but you know, it's insurance. It's there if you need it. So, and then down here, obviously, no corn. Between deer, raccoons, and wet holes, there's plenty of this at the state ground. Uh, the turkeys, raccoons, stuff like that, they like to come out and go down the row and just pick it right out and this wasn't wet when I planted it at all so normally that's part of it but this was dry as a bone when I was planting so but pretty good looking stuff up through there minus the end rows down here but that's why it's state ground and not 300 bushel ground um, that has the potential to make 200 but then down here you'll make 50 or zero and by the time the deer and the raccoons get out in it the endros don't make anything around the outside of the field and when the first 60 80 feet make zero and the field's only eight acres uh it really kills the average so typically out here you're looking at it 140 160 ish um not saying you can't do better you can in the middle of the field but with all the wildlife out here it's it's difficult to do that so spraying the edge here watching my boom and that's pretty well I, all i got tonight so yeah